<coughs> Good evening and happy Sabbath. <coughs> Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father in heaven, in Jesus' name I come before you. And I thank you for life. I thank you for the word. I thank you for the Sabbath, Father. I plead that you may set me free from self. I plead that you may be merciful towards me. And I plead that you may set the people before me free from self. And I plead, Father, that you may be merciful towards them. In Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. <clears throat> Happy Sabbath. <sighs> There's a story of a missionary. He went to a new place, and when he got there, a little boy, a little boy came to him and approached him and asked him if he was a missionary. And he said, yes, I'm a missionary. And the boy told him, so you've come to tell us about Jesus. Or the boy asked him. And the missionary said, yes, I have come to tell you about Jesus. And the little boy said, Jesus was the kind man. Yes, he was loving, he was humble, he was generous, he helped people, he healed the sick, he gave sight to the blind, he was a good man, he was a good person. You could see in what he did and even in what he preached. And the missionary said, yes, I came to tell you that and I came to tell you about Jesus. The boy said, that is very good. We have had many people like you come here and tell us about Jesus. We've had many missionaries come here and tell us about Jesus. But we have never seen anyone like Jesus. He said we have seen people or we have had people come and tell us about Jesus Christ. But we have never seen anybody like Jesus. The title of today's message is Lion versus Lion. Lion versus Lion. And the message is found in Daniel chapter 6. My friend, I need, it's okay. I need to turn this off. The message is found in Daniel chapter 6. We are going to look at this chapter. We might not read all the verses. And then we'll go on to the New Testament. And just look at two verses found in 1 Peter 5, 8. And found in Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. Lion versus lion. A Christian is not an ordinary person. A Christian means a follower of Christ. It is someone who seeks to be like Christ. It is someone who behaves, talks, dresses, and conducts himself like Christ. The Christian is not somebody who just talks or just knows about Christ. But a Christian is somebody who knows Christ. Not just someone who knows about Christ, but someone who knows Christ himself. Someone who has a relationship with Christ and walks with Christ. Daniel chapter 6 Verse 1, the Bible says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom, this is in Babylon, 100 and what? 20. And 20 satraps to be over the whole kingdom. Before we proceed, I have a request from you. We are going to take a flight, and this flight will last us 30 minutes. The Holy Spirit is our co-pilot. This room will be the body of the plane. I'm just the speaker 
from where the sound comes from on the plane. Our fuel is going to be faith. Our control tower is God. And our destination is at Jesus' feet. And this flight will take 30 minutes. But before we take off, I need you to put your cell phones on flight mode. So that we do not experience any turbulence. So please put your cell phones on flight mode. If, if you, uh, some of you are using the Bibles on your phone, please put them on flight mode. Even if you're reading from the written, the, the, this Bible, please put your cell phones on flight mode. We don't want to experience any turbulence. I will give you 10 seconds to do that. Please. Okay, those seconds are gone. So Daniel chapter 6, verse 1. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 100 and what? 120 satraps to be over the whole what? The whole kingdom. These men were to rule Babylon. Verse 2. And over these, over these 120, he set how many governors? Three governors, the Bible says, of whom Daniel was one of them, or was the first. Daniel is an Israelite. Daniel is from the tribe of Judah. Daniel is in Babylon. And Daniel is one of the governors over, the, the, <laughs> over other governors in a foreign land. Daniel is not from Babylon. He went there as a slave. The Israelites had forsaken God's commandment. And because they forsook God, they could not prosper. So they were taken captive by the Babylonians. And Daniel and his friends were amongst those who were chosen to serve in Babylon. Verse 2. And over these three governors of whom Daniel was one, that the satraps might give account to them so that the king would suffer no what? No loss. So here you have Daniel. He has been taken captive. But because God was with him and with his friends, because he was a follower of God and he obeyed God, God made him prosper. In a foreign land. I'm in the Philippines. I'm African. I'm from Angola. Can you imagine if the, the, the president of the Philippines makes me a mayor or a governor of the Philippines? This is what's happening here in Daniel chapter 6. Daniel is not from Babylon. You'll see why this happened. If you come to verse 3, the Bible says, then this Daniel, by the way, Daniel means the Lord is my judge or God is my judge. Then this Daniel distinguished himself above the governors and satraps. Daniel was different from the other two governors that were ruling the 120 satraps. They were all wise, they were all intelligent, but Daniel distinguished himself above all of them. And the Bible says, because an ex excellent spirit was in him, meaning his wisdom was not coming from him. The strength he's had was not coming from him. It was coming from the spirit that was what? In him. That's the Holy Spirit. Because he was filled with the Spirit, Daniel was different from the others. There was no one like him. There was no one who governed like him. And if you continue to read, and the Bible says, And the king gave thought to setting him over the whole realm. He was pondering upon making Daniel govern the whole realm. In other words, he was planning to make Daniel king 
over Babylon. Verse 4. So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. The other Babylonians who were in Babylon envied Daniel because Daniel was different from them. The way he moved, the way he governed, and the way he did things were just different and perfect. And the Bible says he was, he was because of the spirit that was in him. That is the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, if you are filled with the Holy Spirit, things around you will have to change. If you go to John chapter 12, verse 19, the Bible says that the Pharisees said, Look, you are not prevailing because the whole world has gone after him. They were talking about Jesus Christ. And if you go to Acts chapter 17, verse 6, when they were dragging Stephen, they said, these are the men who have turned the world upside down. They were talking about Paul and Silas and, and, and Luke. They said they have turned the world upside down. And when Jesus, in, during Jesus' ministries, the Pharisees were complaining and they were saying, look, we are not prevailing because the whole world has gone after him. <laughs> the Bible says that they envied Daniel and the Bible says he was filled with the Spirit. My dear friends, if you are not persecuted in these last days, you're doing something wrong. If the devil is not against you, if the devil doesn't tempt you, if the devil doesn't bring issues in your life, if he doesn't bring trials and temptations, if he does not disturb you, that's because you are not a worry to him. If he doesn't come against you, that's because you are with him. He's not worried about you because you're not a threat to his kingdom. A Christian, a true Christian, annoys the devil. Let's continue to read verse 4. Daniel chapter 6 verse 4, the Bible says, So the governors and satraps sought to find some charge against Daniel concerning the kingdom. They were looking for a mistake in the way he managed the kingdom and in his workplace. But they could find no charge or fault. <laughs> Amen. Because he was faithful the Bible says. Nor was there any error or fault found in him. Not only, they, listen, they could not find a mistake in his work, in what he did. And then when they looked at his character, he was a good person. The Bible says, let me just repeat that part. Nor was there any error or fault found in him. In him. This man was Christ-like. He was Christ-centered. Verse 5. Then these men, the same men, said, We shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his what? Of his God. Daniel was so straight. Daniel was so faithful. And he was so honest in character and in deeds that they could not find a mistake in him. They were jealous of him. His presence annoyed them. When they saw him coming, even without him speaking a word, they were envious of him. Why? Because he was filled with the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, and they were filled with the unclean spirit. And when they met these two spirits, there was a great controversy. And so they wanted to get rid of Daniel. And they were looking for a mistake 
if they had found one, they would go to the king and say, listen, Daniel has not been faithful. He has been squandering the money. Daniel has not been faithful. He has been committing adultery. He has been stealing. Daniel has been lying. But there was no fault found in Daniel. I, I'm going to repeat this verse. I never understood this verse as much as I see it today. Verse 5. Then these men said, we shall not find any charge. Come on. Against this Daniel. Unless, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. In other words, they said, we know that Daniel will never abandon the law of his God. We know that Daniel will always follow the commandments of God. Do people know that about you? Do the heathen today in the world acknowledge that Christians, Seventh-day Adventists, are faithful people? That they don't only go to church on the Sabbath? You know, a Seventh-day Adventist, I've said this over, I've said it before two weeks ago here, a Seventh-day Adventist is not a person who only goes to church on the Sabbath. A Seventh-day Adventist is not a person who only prays on the Sabbath. Is not a person who only reads the Bible on a Sabbath. A Seventh-day Adventist is not a person who only dresses modestly on the Sabbath. A Seventh-day Adventist is somebody who has been praying Sunday until Saturday. And when he's going to church, he's not going to church to find the Holy Spirit there because he has already found it in his house. A Seventh-day Adventist doesn't go to church empty of the Holy Spirit, hoping that he will get the Holy Spirit in church. He leaves his house or her house already filled with the Holy Spirit, and they are only going to church to get more of the Holy Spirit. A Seventh-day Adventist is not someone who is only going to read the Bible in church on the Sabbath. They have studied the Bible. They have had devotionals Sunday to Saturday morning. And when they are going to church, they are just going to get more. It is not someone who has not worshipped during the week. It is someone who is going to church now to worship with fellow brethren. The Bible says that these men said, unless we find it against him, concerning the law of his God. In other words, Daniel, we know, these are heathen speaking, unconverted people. They are saying, we know that Daniel will never abandon his God. The only way <laughs> to get him to be in prison is if we turn the law of his God into a bad thing to do. You understand that part? The only way for us to get Daniel into prison is if we take the laws of his God and make them appear to be wrong so that when he does not keep it, he will be what? If they appear to be wrong, then he will be doing something against the kingdom. So this is what they did. They took the laws of God and they, they told the king, let's read the Bible. Let me not go ahead. Let's, let's read the Bible. Verse 6, So the governors and the satraps thronged before the king. All of them went to the king and said thus to him, King Darius, live forever. The first thing they did to the king is they praised the king. King, live forever. Now the king is happy. He's been praised. They have, they have aroused his pride. They have excited his pride. Verse 7. Now they're going to tell him what they really want to tell him. 
They didn't want to go tell him live forever. Verse 7. All the governors of the kingdom and administrators and satraps, the counselors and advisors have consulted together. All of them were against Daniel. All of them, counselors, administrators, governors, they were against Daniel and Daniel never did them any wrong. They said, we have counseled together, verse 7, to establish a royal what? Statute, a decree. In other words, a law. And to make a firm decree that whoever petitions any god or man for 30 days, they didn't need a month, they didn't need a year, they didn't need two months. Because they knew that Daniel was a faithful man. It would not take long for him to follow God. 30 days, except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. They said, king, we have met and we came up with a brilliant idea. But before we tell you that, we just want to tell you, king, live forever. They praised him first, made him feel high and exalted. And then they told him, King, we want to make a decree. We want to make a law. We want to implement a law that everyone must follow. That for 30 days, just 30 days, King, everyone must worship only you. Everyone must pray to you. Everyone must bow to you and to no other gods. <laughs> Let me, I want to read verse 5 again. Verse 5 says, then these men said, we shall not find any charge against this Daniel unless we find it against him concerning the law of his what? You remember the law of God, Exodus 20, says thou shall have no other gods before me. That thou shall not what? Bow down before any graven image. And in fact it says of any likeness in heaven, Anything that is in heaven or anything on the earth or under the earth, you should not bow down to it. Whether it's a statue of an angel, it's a statue of a fish, even if it's a statue of a man, the commandment of God says you must not bow down to it. And in verse 5 they said, the only way to get Daniel is if we take the commandment of God and make it seem not important. And we bring a new commandment that goes against the commandment of God. And Daniel will not keep that law. And if he breaks that law, he will be committing a crime. Therefore, we can catch him on that and put him in prison. They knew that Daniel was going to be faithful. And Daniel himself knew, I'm going to go there because I will not bow down. Verse 8. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the what? The writing so that it cannot be what? Changed. According to the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not what? Alter. There is an emphasis in verse 8 that this law that they are going to make, this law cannot be changed. This law cannot be changed. Once they make this law, no one can change this law. Everyone must follow this law. And this law says that we must not worship God anymore. And even in the Ten Commandments, God tells us on what day we should worship. Exodus 20, verse what? Verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it what? Holy. That you must work for six days, but the Sabbath is the Sabbath of the Lord. We must worship on the Sabbath. Let me tell you, in these last days, the same thing is going to happen. They will make a decree. And all those who do not follow it, will be persecuted. 
We'll talk more on that. Verse 9. Therefore, King Darius signed the written what? Decree. He signed it. He wanted worship. Verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that he, the writing was signed, we need to understand this. Daniel heard about it. He was informed, excuse me, that there was a decree that no one in Babylon could worship any other god, pray to any other god, that no one could worship on another day different than the Babylonian day. The Bible says when he knew, he went home. Not to cry, not to complain, not to mourn, not to commit suicide. Nor did he abandon the faith or the church. There are storms coming for the church in these last days. And if you do not create this habit and plead with God to, to help you to do what Daniel is about to do in the midst of a crisis, you will not survive. Because the Bible says Daniel went home and in his upper room, let me tell you, in these last days, every Christian needs to get his own upper room. You remember the book of Acts? Chapter 1, verse 14, says that they were gathered together in the upper room, men and women. Verse 15 says 120 of them. And then you go down to Acts chapter 10. It says that Peter was praying also in the upper room. The Bible says that Daniel went in his home and in his upper room with his window open towards Jerusalem. He was not embarrassed. He was not ashamed of his God. He was not scared to say no. This is sin in front of the world. He was not scared that people would reject him because he was following his God. The Bible says he went to his upper room in his house, opened the window towards Jerusalem. He knelt down on his knees three times that day and the bible says and prayed <laughs> and gave thanks he gave thanks you know when most of us face difficulties and we by the grace of god make it on our knees we don't give thanks lord why did you allow this Lord, how can you let me go through this? Why are you letting me suffer? Why, 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 why? Some even say, I won't pray anymore. They will punish God. I won't talk to him anymore. How can he allow this? The Bible says that Daniel went on his knees and he thanked God. There is a decree that says if he praises God, he's, he will be given to the lions. Daniel does not go and say, God, how can you do this to me? He, instead, he goes and he thanks God. He thanks before his God. And the Bible says this in this verse, verse 10, at the end of the verse, as was his custom since early what? Days. A custom is a way of life. A custom is a habit. Luke chapter 4, verse 16 says, and he went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as it was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood forth to read. It was Jesus' custom to go to church on the seventh day of the week, the Sabbath. Acts chapter 17, verse 2, says that as it was Paul's custom, he, he taught them and met with them on the Sabbath. It was also the apostle Paul's custom to worship and to keep the Sabbath holy. It was their habit. And the Bible says that it was Daniel's custom to pray three times a day. Morning, afternoon, evening. He always prayed to God. Daniel, this is very important. Why does the Bible say that it was his custom and he had been doing this from his early days? 
The Bible is telling us, my dear brothers and sisters, that Daniel did not only pray when he was in trouble. Daniel did not only pray when he was in trouble. Because Daniel did not only seek God when he needed God, but Daniel sought God because he wanted a relationship with God himself. When he faced problems, he had strength to go to his house, open the windows, kneel down, and thank God. People who do not have a consistent prayer life and who are not daily reading the Bible, when they face problems, they shake. They cannot kneel. They cannot walk. They cannot thank God. They only complain and murmur, and God is grieved by this. Why do you go to church? I believe it's Matthew 18, 20 that says, Where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am what? I am there. It does not say where two or three are gathered, I am there. It says where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there. If I come here today, and the reason for preaching God's word is to reveal my knowledge of God's word, not only am I fool, a fool, I am wasting my time, and one day I will reap what I am sowing. And if you come to church not to listen to God's word, some people today, go, they go to church for many reasons, you know. Some have new clothes, they want to show their clothes. So they come late when everybody's inside. And so they walk down so that everybody can look at them. Some go to church because if they don't go to church, they will stay at home alone. Everybody goes to church on the Sabbath in the house. Some don't know why they go to church. Some go to church to see boyfriend, to see girlfriend, to see someone they didn't see the whole week. We ought to come to God to seek God. And when we come in his name, my dear friends, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that there will be a revival. If people leave their homes expecting to have a divine encounter with God, leaving your house saying, Lord, I am going to your house, your holy house. And Father, I expect to have a divine encounter with you. And you are going there. When you sing, you are singing for God, not to show off your voice. You are preaching so that Christ may be glorified we will have a revival. But today we come to church and we snore. But when we watch movies, we cannot snore. Daniel chapter 6, verse 11. Then these men assembled and found Daniel what? Praying. Praying and making supplication before his, his God. By the time they came, Daniel had already finished thanking God. The Bible says they found him making what? Supplication to God. Hmm? Verse 12. And they went before the king and spoke concerning the king's decree. Have you not signed, O king, a decree that every man who petitions any god or man within 30 days Except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of what? Lions. What is the title of the sermon? Lion versus lion. Don't forget that. The Bible says, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. The king answered and said, The thing is true, not knowing that Daniel... <laughs> was praying to God, the king said, yes, the thing is true, I, I have signed that decree, according to the what? The law, the law of the Medes and Persians, which does not what? Alter. Do you see the emphasis here? You find this again in verse 8, that this law that they wanted to make was a law that nobody must change. Everyone must follow it. 
It cannot be changed, it cannot be altered. It will happen in the last days. They will try to do this again. They will try to do this again. And if we are not praying like Daniel, we will not stand. Verse 13. So they answered and said before the king, Listen, the king did not know that Daniel was not praying to him. The Bible says, They told him that Daniel, who is one of the captives from where? From where? Judah. Remember that. From Judah. Does not show due regard for who? For you, O king. Or for the decree that you have signed, but makes his petition three times a what? King Daniel does not regard the law that you have made. Nor does Daniel want to bow down to you. Daniel does not respect this new law which you have sealed. The, the decree that you have signed. Daniel does not tremble at this law. Verse 14, And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself. <laughs> the king felt guilty. Why? And set his heart on Daniel to do what? Deliver him. This king loved Daniel. This king did not want Daniel to die. They tricked him into signing this decree. He did not know that they wanted to do what? To get rid of Daniel. And he had forgotten that Daniel is faithful to God. And the Bible says, And he, the king, labored till the going down of the sun to do what? To deliver him. He tried to find ways to deliver Daniel. And let me tell you this. In these last days, as they will make a decree that we should all worship on one day, there will be no religious freedom. As they push forth that, there are going to be people that are going to try to save us. So I'm not worried. You know, when the cadets were graduating, some of them, March, I told them, soon persecution will break out. And that's true. That's not because I, I imagined in my mind and I persecution. No, I read it from the word of God. And God's word is sure. There will be. And I told them this. When it breaks forth, I want you, they will persecute Christians. You know, maybe you can hide me somewhere. Because when they do this, they will use, they will use uh, people with power and since it will be against the law to worship on a different day, so police will have to arrest you, right? It will be, uh, it will be a crime. So I told them, listen, you, when they send you, you take me, but you hide me somewhere, and you give me some food, like uh, they, the, they, they did with the prophets in Elijah's time. They hid them and they gave them food. I believe about a hundred of them, right? So maybe you do that with me. But if they tell you to persecute Christians, don't waste your time in running after people who are quoting scripture and who are walking around with Bibles. If you want to find a real Christian, lift up his pants and look at his knees. A true Christian bears the scars of the great controversy on his knees. The enemies are unseen. We cannot fight them physically. We cannot. The way we fight is by praying on our knees. Come with me to verse, verse 15. And the king, when he heard these words, was greatly displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to do what? To deliver Daniel. Verse 15. Then these men approached the king. They saw that the king was trying to find ways to save Daniel. 
So they approached the king, verse 15, and said to the king, Know, O king, that it is the law of the Medes and the Persians that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be what? May be changed. In other words, king, O king, you cannot reverse what you have done. Daniel must be thrown in the lion's den. What he has done is against the law of Babylon. It's against the law of the world. And we have to choose whether we will obey the laws of the kingdom of heaven or the laws of the world. Whether we will obey men and philosophies of men, doctrines of men, or we will obey the laws of God, philosophies of God, and the doctrines of of God. In these last days, the devil is going to bring false teachings and debates and topics that will lead us to go against one another. And we have to be very careful. So they have turned this king against Daniel, and the king cannot do anything. But I love what the king does. I want you to come with me to verse 16. So the king gave the command. And they brought Daniel and cast him into the what? The den of lions. Some people would have thought that God would, uh, would not uh, let them get Daniel and throw him in the lion's den. Let me tell you, God has a better plan. What is the title of the sermon? Lion versus lions. Lion versus lions. The Bible says, they threw Daniel, but the king spoke, saying to Daniel, your God, whom you serve continually, he will what? Deliver you. Verse 17. Then a stone was brought and laid on the mouth of the den. This is after they threw him in. They put a stone over the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signets of his lords that the purpose concerning Daniel might not be what? changed verse 18 now the king went to his palace and spent the night doing what fasting, fasting and no musicians were brought before him also his sleep went from him this king was anguished this king regretted what he had done he was self-centered he allowed people to seduce him to receive worship for himself. Because of pride, many of us will miss the kingdom of heaven. It is pride that led Lucifer to fall, and he wanted to be like God. It is the same evil thought. If you go to Genesis 3, he tells Eve, if you eat, you will be like who? Like God. We are in this mess because of pride. This king got himself in this mess because of pride, because he was self-centered. Now he regrets what he has done. The Bible says he went in his palace and he fasted the whole night. And the Bible says... The, no musicians came to him that night. This means that when the king would go to sleep, usually musicians would come and they would play music for him to sleep. And it also says, also his sleep went from him. This is what happens to a person who truly has been convicted and wants to repent. Your deepest hunger is not for food, it is for the word of God. Your deepest thirst is, becomes for the Holy Spirit. You fast and you pray. Verse 19. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of what? He spent the whole night turning in his bed. He could not sleep. He was praying and fasting. He could not sleep. He, he, he regretted what he had done. He was convicted of his sin and his mistake. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste to the den of lions. Verse 20. 
And when he came to the den, he cried out with a lamenting voice. He was weeping to Daniel. The king spoke, saying to Daniel, Daniel, servant of the living God, has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the what? From the lions. Now when this king went to ask this, he was not sure that Daniel would answer. Come on, man. You have been thrown in the lion's den. Hungry lions. Verse 21. Then Daniel said to the king, O king, live forever. Verse 22. My God. My God. Not my, my mother's God, my father's God, my cousin's God, or my boyfriend's God, my girlfriend's God. My God, the God with whom Daniel is saying, I have a relationship with. He's not my God because be through someone else. He's my God. Sent his angel and shut the lion's mouths so that they have not hurt me because I was found innocent before him, before God, because he was covered with the righteousness. And it is the same for any person who genuinely repents, confesses their sins. They are covered with the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And in the eyes of God, you are spiritually innocent. You are perfect and holy. And it says, because I was found innocent before him, this is before God, and also, O king, I have done no wrong before you. Lion versus lion. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, that the devil walketh about like a roaring what? Lion. Seeking whom he may what? Devour. The devil is a lion. In Revelation, Babylon symbolizes a false religion. Huh? A false church, a false system of worship. And the king of that false system of worship is the devil. So the devil is the king of Babylon. The devil is the lion of Babylon. Revelations chapter 5, verse 5, says that, there was, a, there was a seal that could not be what? Broken. It could not be what? Open. But the Bible says that the lion of the tribe of Judah. Let's go there. I want to read it. Revelations chapter 5. Oh man, this excites me. Chapter 5 verse 5 says, okay, verse 4. 4. They could not open it, so the Bible says this. Then John is speaking here. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. Verse 5. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. The lion of the tribe of Judah, of the root of David, is Jesus Christ. Daniel was not afraid when he entered the lion's den to face the lions of Babylon because just before they threw him inside there, he was talking to the lion of Judah. Who is Jesus? And if you look at Daniel chapter 6 verse 13, the Bible says that Daniel is from the tribe of what? Judah. Daniel was not scared of the lion of Babylon because he had a connection with the lion of Judah. Somebody say amen. amen. 
And let me tell you something. They can bring persecution. They can bring anything. But as long as we maintain a connection with the Lion of Judah, they shall not prevail because they are not fighting against me. They are not fighting against me. They are not trying to kill me. They are not trying to stop my gospel. They are not trying to disappoint me. They are trying to disappoint Jesus Christ. They are trying to prevent Jesus' gospel. They are trying to prevent the power of Jesus, not me. So they are not fighting against me. They are fighting against Christ. And nobody can box with Jesus. Nobody can fight Jesus. Nobody. And it says the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, the lamb who has prevailed, who has prevailed, was found worthy to loose, to open, and to read that scroll. Lion versus lion. My dear friends, I encourage you to seek the lion of the tribe of of Judah. There are two lions. One is of the tribe or of the nation of Babylon. One is the lion of Israel. The lion of Babylon, 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8 says, your adversary the devil, the devil, goes around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may what? Devour. So the verse says, be sober, be vigilant. And the only way you can do that is by watching and praying. As we close, I want to read the end of this amazing story. Of this fight between the Lion of Babylon and the Lion of Judah. The Bible says in verse... 23 of Daniel chapter 6 to verse 28. I'm going to read the whole verses. If you can follow me as we close. The Bible says, Now the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den and no injury, whatever, was found on him because he believed in God. Amen. And the king gave the command and they brought those men who had accused Daniel and they cast them into the den of lions. Them, their children and their wives and the lions overpowered them and broke all their bones in pieces before they ever came to the bottom of the den. This is what will happen to all those who are persecute God's children. We do not have to worry about revenge. God will avenge us. The Bible says, revenge belongs to the Lord. Verse 25, Then King Darius wrote, To all the peoples, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied to you. I make a decree that in every dominion of my kingdom, Men must tremble and fear before the God of Daniel. Oh, how I desire that one day the world may say that God may tremble and fear before the God of Ayas. The God of Ayas. For he is the living God and steadfast forever. His kingdom is the one which shall be, which shall not, shall not, shall not be destroyed. And his dominion shall, shall endure to the end. He delivers and rescues. And he works signs and wonders in heaven and on earth. Who has delivered Daniel from the power of the what? Lions. Verse 28, so this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. 
And the reason why he prospered was because he had a living relationship, a genuine relationship with the Lion of Judah. God in these last days will not remove the lions of Babylon from your life when he brings temptation. When they throw you in the lion's den, God will not close the den so that they don't throw you in. Nor will God remove the lions so that you can be in the den alone without the lions. What God will do in these last days, he will keep you in the lion's den with the lions. He will keep you safe so that he may be praised, so that he may be glorified. And when you leave the lion's den, you will never fear any lion. They will be like cats to you. Meow. They will be like cats. And you know when a lion roars, <laughs> oh my friends, I wonder why people fear today. I pity people who know the Bible and they fear. They live in fear. May God have mercy upon us and may we trust in the Lord and seek to maintain a connection with him through fasting and prayer. The Lord has just reminded me of something. I will just read that before I sit down. This is Great Controversy, chapter 31. Ellen White writes and says, talking about the devil, he had succeeded in establishing idolatry in every part of the earth except the land of Palestine. This was during Jesus' time. The devil was successful in establishing idolatry in every nation, in the world, in the world, except for Palestine. Look at this. The only land that had not fully yielded to the tempter's sway, Christ came to shed upon the people the light of heaven. During Jesus' ministry, when he came, the whole world, except for in Palestine, they were worshipping idols. That's disturbing. And today, we are scared of the condition we face. Today, there are Seventh-day Adventists in Asia, in Africa, in Europe. There are faithful people there, worshipping God. During Jesus' time, the whole world except in Palestine were worshipping idols. The Bible says, Ellen White, sorry, Spirit of Prophecy says, Jesus came to shed upon the people the light of heaven. Here, two rival powers claimed supremacy. Jesus was stretching out his arms of love, inviting all who would to find pardon and peace in him. The hosts of darkness saw that they did not possess unlimited control, and they understood that if Christ's mission should be successful, their rule was soon to end. Look at this. I will close with this. Just two lines. Satan raged like a chained lion. This is Great Controversy, page 513, paragraph 3. Satan raged like a chained lion. Satan is a lion. Like a chained lion and defiantly exhibited his power over the bodies as well as the souls of men. Even in these last days, as this lion, the devil, goes about destroying lives, as it seems that it's dark and that the church, it looks like the church is going to fall. It looks as though the church is departing from the word of God. And as this lion, the devil, before, during Jesus' ministry, his first advent, when his first coming to the world, it seemed that there was no hope. There was only one place where idolatry was not present. So shall it be in these last days. The lion of the tribe of Judah will come, this time in so much glory that every eye will see him. This evening, I want to invite you to bow your heads as we pray. And I want us to consecrate ourselves to God.
alone we cannot do this. I fear that sometimes we say that, but we don't believe that. We cannot fight the devil. The devil does not get tired. We get tired. So we need someone who also doesn't get tired. The devil is stronger than us. We can't fight him. We need someone who's stronger. We need someone who's faster than him, and that's Jesus. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for convicting us, O oh Father, of our sins, of our doubt. Sometimes we question your power. We question whether you can deliver us from the lion of Babylon, the devil. And we forget that the lion of Judah has already prevailed and he is worthy and he's able to save us. Father in heaven, we come before you embarrassed and ashamed for doubting you. Father, have mercy upon us. Convict us and set us free from anger, jealousy, hatred, gossip, doubt. Set us free from fear, from grudge. Set us free from self, from pride, a desire to be glorified, worshipped, and known. And help us to decrease so that you may increase. Father in heaven, fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit so that through this power, Lord, we may draw closer to you and have a genuine relationship with you. And as a result of having a relationship with you, we may minister, we may preach, we may sing. But Father, we do not come to you because we want to preach. We do not come to you because we want power. We come to you because we want you. We want a relationship with you. And out of this relationship, we expect, O oh Father, that many will be changed through our lifestyle. Father, have mercy upon us. This evening, dismiss us with power to apply your word, to worship you, and to be truly Seventh-day Adventists. For this is your church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.